We need to talk about Ghost Bass' new album, Star Mourner. So most people are, at least at some level, familiar with Ghost Bath's work. Uh, they put out a CD a couple years ago now, about two years ago, called Moon Lover. And that was uh, very familiar in a lot of aspects to Deaf Heaven, uh, Lethargy, uh, had a little bit of that Alcest taste to it. Uh, that very shoegazy black metal sound. Uh, not particularly original, but... Uh, enjoyable for what it was. It was. Serviceable. Yeah, they had a release that came out before that, Funeral. Uh, not familiar with it personally, uh, independent release, uh, but ge genuinely must have struck somebody's fancy because it got them uh, a label and it got them uh, at least enough of a budget uh, to put something solid together. Production wasn't bad on that CD. Had some genuinely decent riffs, uh, some homages to some older black metal bands and it wasn't too bad at all. I think I'd personally give that CD a, a pretty decent score. Um, now, Star Mourner actually is the newest release. This one just came out. Um, it had a couple of singles, and those singles, not good. Not at all. I heard them and thought, what is wrong with the mixing? Maybe it's YouTube that's destroying the mixing, the YouTube sound is quality. YouTube notorious for that. They yeah. are notorious for it, but then uh, got a copy of the album and not any better. It's no. just as bad as the singles led me to believe. It's absolutely awful in that regard. Oh yeah. Just from the first song, uh, we get these really basic lead-ins, and they just kind of mount up into these really unusual video game-esque leads, these major key riffs. Uh, with this accompanying black metal instrumentation below it. And this is very specifically how it's set up. Um, you've got these riffs on top, these major riffs. You've got black metal below it. And then way down in the basement somewhere, you've got the vocals. And we're going to use the word vocals here very loosely because they're not good. And we'll, we'll get really into that later. Um, but it really doesn't go anywhere for a large majority of the runtime. There, there just isn't anything going on here that anyone wants to listen to for long periods of time. The main songwriter here, he needs to edit things. The compositions are so immensely unsatisfying because they plot on for ridiculous amounts of time. This is an hour and ten minutes as opposed to Moon Lover's 40 minutes. And that is nonsense. Yeah, it's absolute nonsense, especially when a number of the songs break six, seven, eight minutes, and a solid third to half of the song is an outro or an intro. And I, he's trying to build a mood, I, I think. I'm not entirely sure. It invokes no emotion, no mood. It's a bunch of disjointed noises that don't belong together. I don't want to... I don't mean that in a way to say that there's no melodies. There are, but... I feel like none of the elements mesh into anything grand. No. At all. Yeah, it's just a bunch of dissonant pieces that, uh, when put together, don't really form anything. It's like taking 500 different puzzles, jumbling them all together, and then reassembling pieces. It's just a lot of monotonous bullshit that really has no sense, no capabilities, uh, no songwriting structure, no coherency. And I think the biggest issue here is not that it's worse in any aspect than the previous album. It might be a little bit worse in songwriting, um, but the biggest issue is that the production values are so abysmal, and this is a major label debut. This, this was something that was taken by an expansive production team and evaluated and assembled, something that took a while, I would imagine. And he, the results are so lackluster, mediocre, and incomprehensibly bad that I almost wonder if it's some elaborate money laundering scheme. 
because there's just absolutely nothing to be found on the production side. It's so base and raw and ugly in all the wrong ways. This isn't black metal raw. This isn't black metal ugly. This is unprofessional at best. It's, everything is mixed at a different volume, and I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish. I feel like albums that are attempting to be atmospheric like this one is benefit from a more even mixing, at least from an instrumental standpoint. And the vocals can be high or low, depending on what feeling you're going for. Right. That works in a bunch of different ways, but here it's just a, a sonic mess. Yeah, it, it genuinely comes off to me as parody when certain aspects of the music just rise up or lower down. You can really take one of the lead singles here, Thrones, and kind of take that as a gist of the entire album. Here we're starting off with a pretty decent black metal lead and what follows that as the song dissolves into complete incomprehensiveness is what I want to say sounds like a tribute to Sonic Adventures with a loud, booming, high, major key lead that does absolutely nothing for the structure of the song. And right behind that, somewhere in the distance, like in a cave, as if made by some kind of simian Somewhere, there is this loud, incomprehensible cry of agony and despair. Very silencer-esque, and that is very key in all of this. And just wailing over the top of it. It's, it's just, it's, it's absolutely bone-chillingly horrendous. And not in a good way like a lot of black metal in this vein tries to go for. And, Negative. And often succeeds. Not to say silencer succeeds in that, but... Black metal is able to do pain, angry, hateful, well, and none of that here. It's just annoying. Really, that, that could sum up my feeling on this album entirely in one word, is annoying. I've listened to this album four or five times, and I want my time back. This is... I don't even want to talk about this album anymore. They don't. There's nothing else to say. Yeah. Like, this is a gigantic waste of my time, and I don't understand how these guys are getting on big tours in Europe right now. How they're about to tour with Decapitated and Thy Art is Murder later this year. And I, I just, I don't get this. It accomplishes nothing, and this band needs to just quietly pack it in. I, I retain totally. any Retain any dignity that they might have. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, the, that kind of brings us into the, the second part of this uh, series here. I'd really like to just discuss the lead songwriter here. Um, now, he claims that there's some kind of backing band, some kind of accompaniment, um, that there's really some kind of band set up as far as the compositions go. But as far as I can tell, the band, and we're going to use that in hard quotes as well here, the band it really just seems to be made up of one person here. I, I gotta get this out in the open here. I don't believe the ghost bath sounds like anything. I feel like Dennis McCoola is just a giant hipster making devoid music, devoid of any passion, charisma, composition, any content or quality. He's just reveling in this flat and one-dimensional sense of mystery that he set up for himself with this image, this idea of what black metal should be. And he's missing all of the purpose, all of the reality of the genre. He's looking at it through a really strange filter that just doesn't pass for anything. It, everything he's doing here is just degrade. I feel like, personally, everything here sounds like everything else. It is watered down, it is bogged down, it is monotonous. If you had to sit down and ask me a question about what Ghost Bath sounded like, I would just give you the deepest shrug that you've ever seen in your life. I'd shake my head at you and I'd tell you that it's not good. What do you have other than an air of mystery that's slowly being cut away, chipped away, the specifics found and filtered in on? Really you've got bands doing better things, uh, they're making better compositions, they're putting more detail into their albums here. They're just not stealing ideas like he is. He's got an entire vocal performance that lacks 
lyrics. There are no lyrics. There are no lyrics to this album or any of their albums. He claims there are words thrown in, but I, I don't even buy that. I don't even buy that he's putting individual words into his performances. He wants to claim Cigaro, but at least Cigaro doesn't sound like hot garbage, wailing like Silencer. He also claims that Silencer is one of his core influences. Well, neither of us even like Silencer. I personally feel like Silencer has some of the worst fucking vocals I've ever heard. They sound like a dying fucking cat being pushed across a lawn really hard and vigilantly. <laughs> <laughs> They're really bad, and this is equally as bad. I can't stand anything about this band, and I feel like everything going on here is just the most deep and profound sadness known to man. I will not only forget everything ever about this band, but I will forget that I ever had these feelings about it. I want to erase it from my brain with a fucking pickaxe. I'm done! I'm not, I don't, I'm done. It's over. Let's talk about better bands. Let's listen to better bands. Let's worry about bands that will be around in 10 years. Right. This band is going nowhere. Yeah. It's done. Right. I think they've seen the most success they're ever going to see with that album. Yeah. What's the next one going to be? Fucking Castlevania music? What else can you do? Well, I mean, there's nothing I really need to say about them. Yeah. They're, all, all, all I could possibly say is they're a more boring, shitty version of Death Heaven. That's really all I have to say about okay. it. Like, that's how little I think of this. Like, I didn't just... I don't have any opinion on the guy. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't think anybody should care. Uh, it's not that I don't want to do it. It's that it's just... I'm just so indifferent. Yeah. I just can't muster any sort of emotion about this. Right. <laughs> that's... I, we just need to take this conversation here and put this in there. Because that, this album sucks. This band sucks. It's shitty death heaven.